Okay, let's start discussing about also our data visualization with respect to categorical data. Okay, so with categorical data, we, are, we really focus on basically two main types of graphics. And the first one that we're going to do is our trusty old pie chart, or pie graph, whatever you want to call it. We'll call it pie chart. Hopefully these are really familiar to you. So we've got some sort of circle, and it's broken into several pieces of a pie. You can color that guy in. Maybe do circles on this one. And we can crosshash this guy. OK, so pie charts help us quickly see proportions. Um, that's basically what, what they do. And for our categorical, like if we had a piece of categorical data that had multiple categories in it, we can then see how it breaks down. Now, pie charts are specifically geared towards nominal data. Since they don't have any order, you can kind of rearrange them as needed. Um, this is not to say that you can't do one with ordinal data, but it doesn't give you a pie chart is really bad at, at conveying information um, with respect to order. Um, but nominal data, pie charts are, are totally fine. This is a good way to kind of get a graphical representation of, uh, of what's going on. Okay, so this is our pie chart. And the next one that we have is a bar chart or a bar graph. Okay, and a part a uh, bar chart is you can use it. There's nothing wrong with using it with nominal. You can absolutely do a bar chart with nominal, but this is the graphic of choice if we have ordinal data. So we want to put ordinal, ordinal here. We could also do nominal here. So it's really good though for ordinal. Here's why. So with ordinal, like let's say if we had you know a Likert scale, um, you know very painful to not maybe we'll do a scale from one to ten. One, two, three. We'll do a scale from one to five, so I don't have to do so much work. And this is we'll say very, uh, uh, maybe like very sick. And five is very healthy. And some scale, we could give some labels there as well. But I'm just going to go from here one, two, three, four, five. Now, this kind of looks like you might say, Whoa, wait a second, is that discrete data? And the answer is, is no, it's not, because these numbers, they don't represent like a constant step. I don't know what the step from very sick to sick is, um, or from very healthy to just healthy and neutral. I don't know what these exact steps are. They're not defined. It's not like the steps from one child to two child. Like there's a very dis, um, there's a very discrete step for discrete data. But here the these step sizes are, are unknown and these really they're not numbers. I just didn't want to write out all the values. All right. But then we could also do either frequency or relative frequency. We'll do frequency or relative frequency. And these look a lot like a histogram. One way, though, that, that often, not always, but often you'll be able to tell them apart is that the bars don't touch. I mean, that's not like a hard and fast rule. But oftentimes with a histogram, you'll see the bars touching one another. And with a, a bar chart, how they don't touch one another, one another. Now the nice thing here is that because order matters with our ordinal data, we can see how there is some trend. Most people are somewhere between you know sick and healthy, and the extremes of very sick and very healthy uh, don't occur very often. And we can say you know what's you know ninety percent of people are you know sick or healthier, or we could say you know 
I don't know, 60% are from neutral or healthier. We can say those things because there's actually order. Now we could do this bar chart, so maybe if this was like a dinner preference, which is like a pizza, uh, hamburgers or burgers, and this is, I don't know, Chinese. Maybe those are the only three options and those were what the responses were. We could do those down here as well, but with nominal data we could reorganize how those bars look. And so we have to be careful that we don't try to like give some sort of, of association to the patterns that we're seeing, because the patterns that, that you see with nominal data don't mean anything. So let's actually, let's do a bar chart of this guy real quick. So I'll do pizza. Uh, we'll do burgers and Chinese and it'd be something like this uh, now is there anything unique about this shape no I could switch pizza and burgers in order and the graphic would have a different shape um, but the shape really doesn't mean anything anyhow so for our categorical data this is these are kind of our two main things if you've got nominal data a pie chart is really good. If you have ordinal data, please use something like a bar chart. And the reason is, is because it keeps, it gives us some extra information by being able to see the shape of the distribution. Now, is it okay? Like, can you do ordinal data in a pie chart? Yes, sometimes it is appropriate to do. Um, but generally, nominal data works better in a pie chart, and ordinal data works really well in a bar chart.